What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and today I'm going to do a detailed walk around of my new Ford GT. And first off, I want to say a huge thank you to you guys for subscribing and watching our videos because I truly believe the reason the Ford selected us to buy this vehicle was because of you guys. So a huge, huge thank you to you guys for that. Now, you've probably seen a bunch of Ford GT videos. Uh, this is a 2021 and I'm going to do a full walk around uh, of this vehicle, but I'm going to try and give you guys a couple of perspectives that I've not seen online already. And so we're going to start with the battery process. In fact, since this is, I've got the keys now, we're ready to go. We'll go ahead and pull it outside hopefully the rain's not going to come down and we'll kind of give you that walk around but before we do that I want to showcase to you what it's like to actually unhook this thing from the battery tender so the first thing you have to do I'm six foot three so this this door is kind of like a interesting thing you got to lean down here all the way into the very front of the footwell and pop the hood I say that in air quotes the hood because this is not actually where the motor is. If you've seen any Ford GT videos, you know that this is primarily just the area that you can actually plug the vehicle up to the wall so that way it maintains the battery. So the first thing I need to do is unplug the actual battery charger from the wall. And as you can see, you've got your positive terminal, your negative terminal, and you're like, wait a second, where, where's those wires going? Yeah, that's exactly what I said. It's kind of a, a weird, setup where you have the wires here we go so take this you got the it actually unplugs from here and what's nuts is that you have to fish those wires in through the well right here all the way through here so i don't know how well the camera is going to be able to see that but you actually have to take the cord and fish it all the way in there just to be able to plug this thing into the battery charger which is wild it's a wild setup so as you can see it uh, i kind of show you a little bit better and i want to take my watch off because we have not had a chance to do the paint protection wrap yet or the paint protection film yet but you basically to get this thing plugged up you have to feed this wire all the way in through here here we go and you can grab it and as you can see that is how you plug it up to the battery tender right there so it's a very strange i guess quirk if you're a doug demiro fan on the new ford gt but it is nice that they do actually include this very high-end battery charger that even has the Ford GT emblem right there on it. Before we back this thing out of the showroom and get it outside for the rest of the review, I want to showcase something that I'm going to be using right now, and that is going to be the backup camera. What's interesting to me is how low to the ground this backup camera is, but it is going to be helpful as I back this thing out. So if you want another piece of comedy sketch, uh, let's watch me and my six foot three self try and <laughs> get in and out of this car. This is quite interesting. So as you can see, you've got these doors that come up and, okay, okay. All right. This thing is literally like a race car because it is actually, okay. So they built the race car first and they built the road going car around the race car chassis. So without further ado, let's go ahead and close the door and go ahead and back it on out. You thought getting in it was bad. <laughs> All right. Not very practical as a daily driver. <laughs> All right, so we've got it outside. And as you can see, as I'm standing in front or right next to the vehicle, how small this thing is, how low to the ground. Now, a couple of different things. There's going to be five different drive modes. This is going to be in the track mode where it's got the wing up. The suspension is 50 millimeters lower to the ground than what it is when you're normally driving on the road. But I will tell you, I'm not sure how much longer we're gonna be able to stay out here because we do have some pretty nasty weather moving in. We're gonna probably have to move it back to the inside here in just a second. So just kind of wanted to explain in case there's a change of scenery. But nonetheless, this is a 2021 Ford GT. This is the supercar. This is actually made and designed and reimagined after the Ford GT40 won Le Mans many, many years ago. Now, back in 2005 and 2006, there was another version of the Ford GT. It was about 44 inches tall. I don't remember exactly how tall this one is, uh, but the reason that Ford does not go with the GT40 name like they used to in the past was because of copyright reasons. Uh, well, that and also, 
it is no longer 40 inches off the ground like the original one was from Lamaze. So now that this one's a little bit taller, you basically um, have a different, completely different name, a reimagined look. Now this is actually the Carbon Series 4 GT. What in the world does the Carbon Series get you? Well, the main reason that we spec this particular spec on the 4 GT is going to be what you see here, which is the racing stripes. What's so wild about these racing stripes is they're not actually painted racing stripes. As you move in closer, you'll actually see that these racing stripes are really just a lack of paint. If you weren't aware, the Ford GT is made of carbon fiber all the way through. The entire body is made out of carbon fiber. And what you have here, when they went to go paint this vehicle, they basically taped it off to where they didn't paint these racing stripes. They painted the rest of the car, they peeled the tape off, and then they clear coated over everything. So this is completely perfectly smooth. There is no tape line, and this racing stripe is actually just an absence of paint. How wild is that? Looking down at the bottom of the front of the vehicle, you'll notice a couple of things. This is also exposed carbon fiber. This, so this is not, none, none of this is fake carbon fiber. Every little piece of this vehicle has actual carbon fiber. Now also in here, you've actually got a couple of different actuators that will open and close that changes the parameters as far as the, the aerodynamics of the vehicle. So when you change it into track mode or you change it into this mode or change it into that mode, it will automatically adjust based on what you're doing with the vehicle, which I think is absolutely crazy. The other thing I wanted to showcase to you are these headlights. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn them on so you can kind of see what's going on but what is so neat about these is that it has got a clear look of the Ford GT in the actual headlight so as I turn on that is your parking lamps and these are your headlights on and you even also have what I guess you could call it the, the high beam uh, so I'm not sure if that is adjusting anything there but you can see the actual function of those headlights located right there up front you do have a set of Michelin Pilot Cup Sport 2 tires these are 245 35 ZR20s and it is a very very sticky compound as you can see you've got rocks literally stuck to the tires here the reason that, that I point that out is because this car is notorious for throwing rocks up with the crazy aerodynamics. We're gonna cover some things here in the back here in just a second, but the reason we can't drive this vehicle yet is because it doesn't have any paint protection film on it yet. And why do you need paint protection film? Take a look at this. The aerodynamics is so crazy. They literally have aero coming all the way through here. So if you drive this car without paint protection film, it, the tire is literally throwing rocks onto the paintwork right from the start. So we have to get this thing trailered up and take it over to get some paint protection film. Before we go any further in the video, I do want to showcase the brakes to you. These are going to be carbon ceramic brakes and they are made by Brembo. They are massive and absolutely stop on a dime. And I don't know if I mentioned it to you already, but you do have your carbon fiber, exposed carbon fiber wheels. And what's so cool about that is you've got the premium upgraded lug nuts. I believe those are the titanium lug nuts if I'm not mistaken. Now coming to the side here, I want to showcase something else to you. As you've already mentioned, um, this is a carbon series, but every 4GT is going to be completely made out of carbon fiber. As you can see, this is one gigantic piece of carbon fiber that goes all the way through. It's an, an ability to showcase to you how much carbon fiber is involved in this vehicle, and it actually goes all the way in through the door and then also into the actual door sill as well. So yeah it's absolutely wild so let's do this since this rain is literally i can see it on the horizon i'm going to go ahead and back this thing back on the showroom and kind of finish up this review for you All right, I'm not sure whose idea it was to finish up that review outside, but now you get to see a review of a Ford GT that is wet. So we'll go ahead and continue on. And one thing you'll notice is that the rear wing is up. Now what's so cool about this rear wing is that it is completely hydraulic, meaning that it goes up and down and it also will tilt forward and then back to this specific position. Now what's so cool about this wing is that since it's hydraulic, it's got a lot of power behind it. And for safety purposes, if the wing goes up when you're stopped, the wing will not go back down until you hit 17 miles per hour or 14 miles per hour, something around that range. 
that when you get to that speed, then it'll drop back down because this is a pinch point. Who knows, it might even could take your finger off if you get your finger in there and that wing goes back down. There is no sensors to stop it. And so that is why that does that. Now, the other thing you'll notice, there is actually a gurney flap located in this wing. So as the wing goes up and down, the lip of this little gurney flap will actually adjust as it's up and it's down. Now there's one little cool extra little feature that Ford has realized over the years because this is not the very first version of the Ford GT. It actually came out in 2017. And as you can see, this is a 2021 carbon series. But what they realized is that over the, the time, if you leave this wing in the down position, the natural tendency for the wing is to want to rotate forward if it's not driven for a certain period of time. And so Ford has told us that if you leave this thing parked at any length of time, you want to make sure that you do so with the wing in the up position. Otherwise, what will happen is that these little points right here in the actual wing will want to rotate down slowly over time, causing damage to the actual body of the vehicle. So that is something that I've not seen in any other YouTube video, and I wanted to make sure that I included it to here to kind of give you guys some extra value or some better content than something you might not have seen in the past. Now, um, let's do this. Let me showcase to you what it's like to get in the vehicle if the battery is completely dead. If the battery on your GT is completely dead, there's a very complicated process to actually get to it. The first thing you'll need is the key itself to get in the vehicle. So there's gonna be a hole located just underneath here. Yep, about right there. And what you'll need to do is take that key and insert it into that little keyhole. When you do that and you rotate it, which I need to actually come out of this direction. So when you rotate it, watch what happens to this little hatch. It automatically will pop open. So even if the vehicle is dead, you can access this back area right here. All right, so that's taken care of. Well, we open this area and you'll see a couple of different things. We're gonna talk about the engine in a second, but this is your massive trunk space. He says so sarcastically. And located in here is a manual popper for the door. So I don't know how well you're able to see where the tip of my finger is, but if you pull this way on that little latch, it will actually pop the door and allow you access inside of it. And then you can open the door, all right? So now, once you're in the door, you have to get into the trunk or to the very front area. And to do that, you've already seen, you wanna slide down here and hit that front latch as well. So you've got a multi-step process just to get to those battery terminals you saw at the beginning of this video. Before we do shut this little clamshell on the backside, let's talk about the engine. This is a 3.5 liter V6 EcoBoost which is making a uh, whole lot of horsepower, 647 horsepower, and a ton of torque that I don't have memorized, so I'll put it right there on the screen for you guys. But what's so cool about this engine, it is actually built by Ye Roush and Yates, and this is the same motor that is found in a lot of the, the prototype race cars that you'll find. And uh, these engines are actually handmade in the United States, and I think it's so cool that Roush Performance makes these engines, and we're a Roush Performance dealer, so I think that's absolutely so cool. And what's so cool about this, we didn't realize this until after the fact that Ford Motor Company gave Jack Roush a, a Ford GT that is a very similar, if not the exact same color as our GT. Ours is the Carbon Series, I believe, and I don't think his is, but I think it's kind of cool that Roush built our motor and we've got a very similar color for GT that Jack Roush does as well. Before we move on to the inside of the vehicle, I do want to showcase a couple of things back here. First of it is going to be the titanium exhaust. This one does have that upgraded titanium exhaust. And what's so crazy is this is an actual aftermarket company that's making this exhaust. And I have absolutely no, have, no clue how to pronounce their name. So I'll put that right there on the screen, but they are really known for their high end, high level performance uh, exhaust system. It is a little bit warm, but nothing that's gonna actually burn me. Now, another thing that we're gonna be talking about is this area gets very, very hot. And so anytime you're going to be doing any kind of a, a paint protection film, you wanna make sure that you cut the lines located right in here. You don't want any paint protection film in this area because if you do, that paint protection film gets too hot. It has a tendency of bubbling up and it just doesn't look all that good. Now, while we're over here, let's talk about the tail lights. Now, these things are so cool because it actually allows air to flow through these tail lights. And now on this side, I believe you have the transmission cooler and a couple of other coolers. On the other side, you actually have the oil cooler for the vehicle as well, because it is a dry sump oil pump. So there is no traditional oil pan, if you will. So what it is, is that hot exhaust actually allows it to flow 
float out of the backside of these tail lights, and I think it is such a cool little trick that has uh, really gathered the attention of the Ford GT and why it's such a popular and in-demand vehicle. And speaking of in-demand, let's talk about the numbers. Right now, as far as I'm concerned, Ford is going to cap the production of these vehicles to 1,250 vehicles in the entire world. And we are so honored that we actually have one of those vehicles. Now, as far as the Carbon Series, I, I don't know off of the top of my head if they've actually come out with a hard number of how many are the Carbon Series, but uh, we do know that it isn't much more limited than just a normal Ford GT. But the other thing I want to point out to you is something that really is well known about this car, and that's going to be these flying buttresses. So what is so wild about this car is this the car is really designed around winning Le Mans first. They designed the race car to make sure that it has the aerodynamics, the fuel efficiency, but really the aerodynamics. That's one of the reasons the interior is so small. Spoiler alert, I'm going to show you that here in just a second. But the idea is to allow the arrow for this car to slide right through here, making sure that you have more air that is hitting this actual rear wing. And it just creates an, a lot of extra downforce. And I think it absolutely looks fantastic. But what's so crazy is this is the actual intake for the motor. So the air comes in here and it comes up these flying buttresses and then down inside of the motor. And that is where the car is getting the air induction on this vehicle. Let's talk about the door functions for just a second. You'll notice this button right here covered in the blue sticker. Um, that is going to be your door opener. Now there is a right and a wrong way to open this door. So if you press the button, it pops the door, right? And if you go to pull the door open, it doesn't want to open. You see that? What you have to do is you have to, in one swift motion, press the button and then also pull on the door. If you wait too long, the door will not open. So watch this. That's how you have to open the door. You don't want to delay it. You need to tap and pull. Now, the other thing that you might not have, might have noticed that if you're going to store this vehicle for a long period of time, it's actually recommended to crack these windows down just a little bit because as I shut this door, you'll notice that when it shuts, it's going to roll that window up to kind of create a nice seal when you're on the interstate. Did you see that? If you're going to keep this vehicle on a showroom or on your, uh, in your garage for a long period of time, you're not worried about rain, you need to crack that window just a little bit so that way that roll up, roll down function uh, doesn't cause any issues in case you lose the battery power. So if for some reason the battery dies in this thing and you open the door, it's going to want to break that window. To keep that from happening, you want to stay with a cracked window there. Nonetheless, let's take a look on the inside and show you what you've got. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about is really the, the actual door mechanism. So as you can see that little hinge located right there, there is a gas assisted strut located right in this area right here. And you'll also notice how beefy this actual hinge is where the door opens. I have absolutely no doubt that this door is not going to have any issues on the long term as far as opening up. This thing is stout. On the inside of the Ford GT, this is so low. I've never, I feel like I'm literally on all fours right now, just so that way you can see me inside of this video. But there's a couple of things that's going on. As I've already mentioned to you, this is a carbon fiber monocoque, meaning the entire higher thing is made out of carbon fiber with a couple of exceptions. Just like the Ford GT race car that won at Le Mans, there is actually a titanium roll cage instilled on the inside of this vehicle that you cannot see. And so this is the exact same titanium roll cage that is found in that race car with one exception. They, the race car actually had the door bars that went across just in case, but really Ford doesn't care about your comfort on the inside of this vehicle. They don't care that I'm six foot three. All they cared about was winning Le Mans and then they had to make a production car to go along with that. And so that is one of the reasons that you'll find this interior cabin is so small is it really was only intended to fit one person not two. Uh, but on the inside, I want to showcase to you the seat bottoms themselves are actually bolted to that monocoque. There is no adjustment on this piece. Now, you do have the ability to lean the seat forward and back, but that is literally it. Now, in addition to that, you also happen to have these pedals are adjustable, but you cannot move the seat. So you bring the pedals to you by pulling this little strap located right here. When you do that, it will automatically bring those pedals in closer to you. And I think that is a really sweet setup. Up. Now, in addition to that, you also have the ability to adjust your steering wheel. To do that, there's going to be two latches. You have the one latch that is located right here, 
and you have the other latch that is located right here. Between those two, you have the ability to adjust this thing a whole, whole lot. Even though the cabin is extremely small, they still found a place to put some of these buttons like your start stop button right here in between the two passengers. You have your gear selector button, you have your hazards, traction control off, you have comfort mode for your suspension, and you also have the ability to raise and lower the suspension with this button right here, as well as your parking brakes located right here. Now, the Carbon Series does does eliminate all of the cup holders, which is a good thing because if anybody got in my, my car with a cup, I would probably kill them. <laughs> I'm just being frank. Can I, can I be frank for a second? Uh, who's frank? Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the actual infotainment system. So this is a very, very tiny version of Sync 3. So this is not the Sync 4 system because keep in mind, this car originally debuted in 2017, but as I put the key in and hit the start stop button, since I don't have my foot on the brake, it does not start the car. But what will happen is you've got the infotainment system that pops up with your beautiful GT Ford Performance logos. And as it pops up, you'll notice this looks shockingly similar to the same Sync 3 system that found in my 2017 Ford Raptor with just an updated skin on the actual system here. So you have the ability to change your source from AM to FM, Bluetooth audio. Um, you do have USBs in here. So you do have a normal USB and you can actually have Apple CarPlay in this setup, which is so cool. You do have your navigation system, the normal Ford apps. And although this is the first time I'm playing with this setup, this is almost a spitting image of what is in the Sync 3 system in previous Ford vehicles, which I think is pretty interesting. The air conditioning controls are located here and here. So you have your fan speed located right here. You have your temperature control located right here. And then you also have where it's blowing located over here. So it's very simple, but it, it does the job. I think it does the job pretty well. Now, the other thing I want to showcase to you is going to be this right here. Someone asked, what is M131? That is the serial number of this particular Ford GT. Every Ford GT has a specific serial number. That is going to be the serial number for this particular car. Now, I do want to showcase to you a couple of other things that I think is absolutely so sick, and that is going to be the suede located up here. So you've got this cutout here for your airbag system, but even past that and underneath here, you have carbon fiber on the dashboard underneath the Alcantara. The level of detail on the inside of this thing is absolutely ridiculous. Since the seats themselves don't move, everything else moves. I've already shown you the foot pedals. Now let's talk about the steering wheel. We've already seen that it actually operates in telescopes and all that kind of stuff. But because of that, they needed to make sure that every control is available right here. And they've done a pretty good job of that. Here are going to be your high beams. You've got your windshield wiper. You have your track mode versus normal mode and wet mode. We're going to cover that in just a second. You've got your windshield wipers, you have your left turn signal, your right turn signal, you have your cruise control because when you're driving your Ford GT on the interstate, you really need to have your cruise control. <laughs> You've got your voice activation for Sync 3 system, your menu control for the actual instrument cluster, your back button for that as well. You've got a volume control for your radio, and then you've got the seek back and forth for your radio as well. Now, you've also got these really, really nice uh, paddle shifters, and they feel fantastic. Although I have not had a chance to drive this vehicle on the road right now because we're waiting for that paint protection film, you can probably hear how how satisfying the click for this paddle shifter absolutely is. So I'm going to bring the microphone a little bit closer so you can hear what I'm hearing. It is very tactile and it has a very minimal amount of movement, but it's clicky enough you know that you're actually getting the job done when it comes to shifting the vehicle. Let's jump back into the actual drive modes here right now. And for that, I do need to start the vehicle up. So my foot's on the brake. I'm going to hit the engine start stop button. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the parking brake as well. So now the vehicle is actually running. So as you can see, I have it in normal mode and you have the ability to go from normal mode to sport mode. You can go down to track mode. And then if you go back all the way to the top, you have wet mode and also the VMAX mode. So a pretty sweet little setup. Now what you see right here on the screen is it's wanting me to confirm that I want to go into the VMAX mode because if I do, it's going to reduce the ride height by 50 millimeters. You hit the button and instantly, <laughs> that is the coolest party trick ever. Now what's so neat about that is if you go back into any other mode that requires normal ride height, it instantly will pop you back into that area. 
<laughs> that is something that will absolutely never get old. Now, the other thing that I want to showcase to you, you probably can't see it very well right now because of the way that we're inside, but located in the steering wheel, you actually have a shift indicator with lights that pop up. Now, those lights do pop up after a certain number of RPM, uh, and it is so cool that that is going to be located right there in front of you as you're driving. It will definitely get your attention. But if that doesn't get your attention, if you drop back down into, let's just say, track mode, we're going to hit the OK button to enter that mode, and it will obviously drop back down as far as that's concerned. Notice how the entire instrument cluster uh, adjusts to exactly what we're doing. And as you can see, you do have your RPMs located right there, as well as your temperature controls for everything, and then also how much fuel we have. Now, I do want to tell you that this vehicle is delivered to us with 12 miles on it. I want to know who in the heck at Ford Motor Company been driving my Ford GT before I got a hold of it. That ain't cool, man. Now I'm getting ready to cut the vehicle off. Notice I'm still in the track mode, so it's in a nice and low position. Something that I wish Ford would change is the ability to leave the vehicle low to the ground when it's parked. But unfortunately, when you hit that engine start stop button and turn it off, watch what happens. <laughs> it automatically pops back in to that higher mode. So the only way to get that vehicle to stay nice and low to the ground is to go with a Ford GT Mark II, which as you know is a race car. It doesn't even have a VIN number. It's rocking off of a serial number because it's not street legal. All right. So uh, Mitchell here, Josh here, <laughs> we are literally elbow to elbow, shoulder to shoulder. This thing has absolutely zero comfort room inside this vehicle. This is just kind of, I'm six foot three. Josh, how tall are you? Six foot one. Six foot one, so two, two six foot big boys. This is not something you want to take on a long distance trip. And as you can see, it's kind of, yeah, my, my head like literally is on this, the Alcantara roof, which by the way, I just noticed this. This is actually a really nice Alcantara roof. All right, let's do this. Let's go ahead and head upstairs and let's go take a look at those documents so you can see what it's like as far as the ownership experience is concerned. Let's take a look at the documents that Ford gave us when we took possession of the Ford GT. Now, I think I've already mentioned this in the video, but I do want to let you know this is our personal vehicle. No, it is not for sale. So um, <laughs> even if I wanted to sell it, which I don't, uh, but even if I wanted to sell it, um, I'm actually contractually, contractually? <laughs> I can't sell it for two years. That is the rule that Ford gives you is you have to sign a document that says you're not gonna sell this vehicle for two full years. So nonetheless, let's take a look at the packet. So, all right, this is only my second time actually seeing it. This is the signature of us when we had to sign with reliable car carriers that we were taking possession of the vehicle and that there was no scratches or anything like that. But there's your Ford GT. Opening up, this is what you're getting. So, what you've got here. We're going to go through these pictures. Um, in fact, I'll just flash those on the screen so that way we don't have to sit there and watch me open every single one of them. But they give you hard copies of the actual photos of the vehicle when it was going through production. Now, the other cool part is they give you a general information sheet. This is your ba basically your build sheet on the Ford GT. And what's so cool about it is they give you this little placard that has got serialized that matches the serial number on the Ford GT. This is designed to go on the case of that order kit. So I think that's pretty cool that Ford ties that back into the vehicle. Also, you have some premium offerings. So as a Ford GT owner, you have the ability to get a 1-8 scale of your exact color, your exact options. I think that is so cool that they give you something you can put on your desk or just a collector car to go with your collector car, if you will. So you've got that on the front and the back. You've got some premium carbon fiber uh, helmets available to you and what's cool is it actually is designated and tied back into that VIN number as well so you can see that and then you even have a Ford GT replica watch for your Ford GT and you can actually purchase I think up to two of these if that's something that you are wanting to do so a pretty cool setup that Ford gives you the ability to buy some merchandise that is not available to the public only available to Ford GT owners. That is something that I haven't really seen a whole lot on YouTube there. Now, I will showcase to you guys the window sticker for the vehicle. I am going to blur out the actual MSRP of the vehicle because I, I just feel weird. It's, it's such a high amount of money that it just kind of feels weird to me to even talk about this because the last thing I want this to look like is some kind of a weird flex because that's not at all what it is. And I know a lot of you guys that have never met me in person 
don't understand, but there's absolutely no ego. There's no anything like that going on. We are truly humbled to say thank you for watching our videos. We truly, truly love you guys, and we're just glad to have you as a part of, um, out of uh, we're just glad to have you a part of our community, and we're just so honored that we have this community to share this particular vehicle with you guys. And so there you go. This is our unique look at the new Ford GT, the ownership experience. And trust me, you want to stay subscribed to the channel because we've got a lot of fun content planned for this particular vehicle. Um, I think I've already said it in another video that we did, but I wanna say a huge thank you to everyone that watches our videos. A uh, huge thank you to everyone at Ford Motor Company that allowed me to purchase this vehicle because I truly feel like there's a lot of really good Ford dealers out there that didn't get this car. And I am truly humbled that someone at Ford thought enough of us to actually give us one of these cars. So a huge, huge thank you to you guys. If you haven't already done so, make sure you smash this thumbs up button. It really helps promote this video to other people that need to see it. And if you're new around here, make sure you're subscribed with that bell notification turned on so you don't miss a single video. Peace. Peace.